Hello viewers, my name is Jordan Golson, and behind me is a Rivian R1S, and then behind me on the other side is a Tesla supercharger. How does that work? Well, this is one of the new Tesla superchargers with the magic dock, which allows us to plug it in to non-Tesla cars. So let me show you how this works. First, we got this. Okay, and there's the regular DC fast charger, right? And then there's the Tesla charger. But how do we get that open? Open up the Tesla app here, tap on that, and you hit charge here, and you tell it which thing you're at, right? Because a Tesla just charges automatically when you plug it in. So if you just pull this out, you get the regular Tesla charger, right? We are at 1A, unlock adapter. Oh, I heard a click. Push the handle into the dock, then pull out to remove. Oh, look at that. All right, so there we got a regular DC fast charger. And we will plug that into that. And so, of course, being a supercharger, there's no screen. There's no place to plug in your, like, credit card or anything. You have to use that. And so it says, after plugging in, it may take two minutes to start charging. So, let's see. And sure enough, look at that. It says right on there. 257, 290, 300 miles an hour. So this is supposed to be, Tesla says this, a 250 kilowatt charging. It says 140 charging, 20 whatever percent. Does that match this? Yes, it does. So the car says it's at 26%. The Tesla app says it's at 26%. And we've already taken one kilowatt hour. So, well, gosh, that was easy. And so what Tesla's doing here is they charge on a per kilowatt hour basis and then there's an idle fee for when it's full. So that sort of works like a regular Tesla. And it's something like 57 cents a kilowatt hour, which is a lot. Um, I did not pay nearly that much when I just charged at an Electrify America station, but that's okay. Like there's Tesla charges everywhere. And so I'm here in Red Hook, New York, and this is one of the stations that has been upgraded with the new chargers. And if you're a Tesla user, you wouldn't really notice it, right? It would just sort of work and you wouldn't know anything different. But if you've got the Tesla app here, you can bring your non-Tesla car. And I gotta say, this is a little weird using a Rivian at a Tesla charger. If you're a Tesla, you would back in, right? So if you wanted to use this one, you would back in right here and then your charge point would be, you know, right about, right about there, right? But on something like the Rivian, if you wanted to use this charger, right? You wouldn't pull in there. You'd pull in to this spot because the charger would be right about here. And so it could reach. And then the same thing would be true with like a Ford Mustang Mach-E or a Lightning or whatever. This sort of setup works really well. Now in some other superchargers, like the charger's been like here, right? And so the cable is here. And so it's designed to plug into a Tesla because all the Teslas charge in the back. And so that wouldn't work very well for our Rivian, which may be why only certain stations are getting upgraded. Basically, there's a bunch in New York that have been updated and then a few elsewhere. Here's our Rivian charging away. And here's some neat stuff that the Rivian does when it's charging, which is kind of cute. For one thing, you get this light at the front and it pulses green. And normally that's part of the, the uh, daytime running lights, right? But you know, here you get a little, a little green pulse. And then you also get here on the back and it's subtle but you know, it sits there and it's charging. So at a glance, you can see, you know, it's pulsing away and oh, we're charging up. It's pretty cool. Still 143 kilowatts. So we're pretty well pegged there. Got 10 kilowatt hours for $5. So this is not the cheapest, but these stations do cost money. And so if you want it to be cheaper, you can subscribe. There's a monthly fee, I think it's $12 a month. And you get it for like 35 cents a kilowatt hour or something instead of 51 or 57 or whatever it is. I can also go into the Rivian app and it'll show me. This is the status it's getting from the car. So we've added 16 miles, you know, that's in sport mode, which is what I was using to get here. And so then you can adjust the maximum charge amount can see the current speed and it'll give you a little readout showing, okay, how fast has it been charging at different percentages? How much energy have you gotten? How long did it take? Cost estimate, it doesn't know that because it doesn't talk to the Tesla network, right? The Tesla chargers do show up in the app and it says that where they exist and that you can use them with the Rivian. But other than that, 
uh, you can't like activate it from the Rivian app or anything like that. Yeah, see status unknown, eight charger. So it knows that it exists, but that's, that's pretty much it. Into the Tesla app to manage, you know, stop the charging, things like that. Or it also says you can press the button on top of the magic dock there that's plugged in and that will also stop it. So you do need the app to begin the process to turn it on and then you press that to turn it off or you can turn it off there in the app. We're at 94 miles of range. We've gained 24 miles and we're going at 310 miles an hour. If we were in conserve mode, it would adjust that, right? So I can go over here and you have the drive modes, but you can't change them while it's charging for some reason, I'm not sure why, but when it's in sport, you get a lower total range than you do when it's in conserve. And I guess that's it, like it, it started up right away. My only hiccup was that I had not added in credit card information. And so I had to stop and I had to do that. You only have to do that once and then it'll auto bill you. It was just as easy as Electrify America or whatever. And somehow I feel a little better about using a Tesla charger than I do about using one from you know, Electrify America. Though I did use an EA station this morning and it worked great, so I can't really complain too much. But So, I'm going to sit here for a while and uh, keep charging, but, you know, using a Tesla charger with a Rivian works great. So, it says it'll charge up to full in an hour, 12 minutes, and that's what the car says. So, like, as it keeps going... Once it gets to like 80% charge, it really slows down. But in my experience, it does keep going um, at pretty close to maximum speed. Uh, all the way up to 80%, it slows down a little bit. So you can see we're still going 144 kilowatts there. We've got 18 so far, which is good for 32 miles in sport mode. Pretty cool. Tesla and Rivian playing well together. This is going to be a big deal in rural areas. Uh, where the Tesla stations like this are not very used. I don't know when was the last time I saw a Tesla station for this long. I've been here for almost 15, 20 minutes, something like that, uh, that had no other cars. So this is good for Tesla. Like, they make some extra money. They're paying less than this, less than 57 cents a kilowatt hour for electricity. So they get to make a little money here on the, uh, here on the chargers, and this makes total sense. There are certainly some chargers that are always filled with Teslas all the time, and they're not going to take other cars. But for more remote stations like this that aren't, full all the time? Why wouldn't you? Why wouldn't you make extra money? So there you go. So that is uh, Rivian R1S. You know, it's a big three row SUV. I have a review of this up already and I'm going to have another more comprehensive review with this car, but I wanted to show you guys the Tesla charging setup. So enjoy that. If you like this, uh, click a like, leave a comment below. What do you think of Tesla opening up their chargers to non-Tesla vehicles? Is that a good idea? Or are you a Tesla owner and you think that's a bad idea because the lines will be longer? I don't know. Let me know in the comments. Thanks a lot for watching.